play and it'll go away. Sound awful. No, beautiful. Bach would turn over in his grave. Someday, you can be better than Bach. Don't be ridiculous. Better than Casals, better than Yo-Yo Ma. <laughs> Maybe. I tell you, you can be anything you want. If you don't get what you want, just means you didn't want it bad enough. Words become reality. I know. Then again.
You miss? Uh, hey. Um, is this a bad time? If it's a bad time, I can go. You know, it's fine. Just um, talk to me while I get ready. How you been? Good. Good. Uh, things are good. You... Good. Well, that's good. I guess who I ran into at the post office? Janet. Which one's Janet? Well, I told you about her. She was before you. Never met her. But anyways, it turns out she's moved to a place on 7th, so we're going to hang out. Is it a date? You don't have to answer that. We're just friends. She's got a boyfriend, a serious one. How do you do that? Do what? Stay friends with all of your exes. I don't know. Breaking up doesn't change who you are. You still like who that person is, right? And Janet's great. I mean, when you think about it, it hasn't even been that long since she and I broke up. A year and a half. That's not long at all. For some people it isn't. You know, I read somewhere that it takes a year to shed one entire layer of skin. So, when you think about it that way, it's a whole year before you lose a layer of skin that holds on to the memories of someone. Where does your skin hold the memory of? A or B? A, B, neither. You hate them both. No. Uh, <laughs> look. What <laughs> that face? Uh, look, I have to run some errands in the neighborhood. Just thought I would stop by return these. Please. Cool. I thought maybe you want them back. I thought you lost these. Yeah, but I was cleaning, and I guess they fallen back behind the couch, and I... What do you mean you were cleaning? I was putting things away. Dusting. You hate cleaning. I've seen you. You get nervous when things get too organized. I was packing some stuff up, and I, uh... Packing? You're, you're moving. No. Kind of. Just stuff letting. Only... I'll have gone a little bit. Um, where? LA! Wait, what? Why? You sound like a newspaper article. Where? What? When? Eunice. It's just for a little while, just to see my mother. Your mother? You told me your parents were dead. I told you, my father was dead. My mother, she's she's in LA. Did something happen? Is she sick? No, nothing like that. Then what? I don't know. You always got a reason for what you do? Yes. I don't always know if I do. Let's start small. Why are you here? Oh, God, I'm not, I'm not honestly. Oh, you know what your problem is? You're like Russia. What is that supposed to mean? Okay, it's like when Napoleon went to war with Russia, he amasses this huge army, then drives into Russian territory, hungry to fight. He can't wait, so he gets his men ready, and then the next morning they go out onto the battlefield, and then they charge the enemy, except the field is totally empty. There isn't a Russia to be seen. So he keeps chasing them farther and farther into the interior, and they just keep withdrawing until finally Napoleon and his men are starving and exhausted and defeated. <laughs> so I'm a big lamb now? Well, why didn't you tell me we were at war? I am not your enemy. You are the one who called me Russia. I'm just saying, you have a habit of doing that. Withdrawing. You know, I tried. Even when we were together, I always felt alone. And I only brought so many supplies with me, and they only lasted so long. I know. You don't have to say it. Hear a story? Is it scary? It sounds scary. No, funny. I went to the doctor the other day, and uh, you know how they make me pee in those little cups? <laughs> I'm in the bathroom, and you know, usually you never see any graffiti in those bathrooms. They're always squeaky clean, right? What the fuck? But <laughs> there I am on the toilet, staring at the door, and there's something written on it. Someone has scratched the words right into the metal, like with a key, and it said, Call me Eileen. Except there wasn't any punctuation. I couldn't figure out if it was a directive to Eileen. 
hit me, hurt me, call me, Eileen, or direct at the general. Hit me, hurt me, call me Eileen. That's funny. That's <laughs> why we were at the crazy. I can't do anything but meditate on the various states of Eileen. Eunice, why were you at the top? It, it reminds me of a joke. <laughs> you know, one of those name jokes. What do you call a girl with one leg? I don't know. <laughs> Answer. I don't yes. know. Eileen. You call her Eileen. Get it? <laughs> I pray. you hardly ever did. I know you're hoping for some kind of epiphany or a revelation. Well, I have nothing like that for you. The simple fact is I was not made for you. My mother smelled that softness. I wasn't made for that. And I was just a temp on Wall Street, a sad face, pale little office worker like Barnaby the Scrivener, looking out a window that faced only a wall. Speaking of which, uh, optional reading list, books I like, Barnaby the Scrivener, Melville. As for where you come from, well, there isn't much to tell. I come from a family that doesn't really talk about the past. For instance, my mother has a scar on her throat, but I still don't know exactly how she got it. When I was a kid, I thought she said it was a star. And so for most of my growing up, I thought she had some magic in her right there, shaped like a mini explosion. I remember once, when I was in eighth grade, I had to make a family tree for a class project. Me, an only child, my father of two half-brothers, I never met my mother, one sister, who died when she was just a child. My father's parents, my mother's parents, grandfather's 
dead on both sides before I was even born, and that's it. Um, I took this charge to school very proud of what I had done and who was up first. But my best friend lives crazy. A family tree was the size of a bobo. Oh, she had people like Anne Boleyn, George Washington. Oh, Liz Grady oozed history. <laughs> she once showed me the contents of her whole chest. Linens from her grandmother, silver from a great aunt. Stuff that had stuff that had been passed down for generations. I looked at it and thought to myself, I have no hope, Chess. I have no hope. I'm just saying, so what if you grew up not knowing where you were from, maybe more than hair color or eye shape? It's that feeling that proves your mind. <laughs> Yenisha! You've been hiding in your room all day. feeling well lately. I'm sorry to hear it. How are you feeling now? Nauseous. Thanks for asking. She's really not usually like this. It's just the uh, pregnancy. Morning sickness and all, you know. You, Eunice. Well, maybe I can help. Paul's a doctor. Well, of course he is. That's enough. Was that the phone? I didn't hear I'll anything. get it. You two talk. Get to know each other. I, I mean, 
I guess that was the thing. I wanted to hate you, but I couldn't. I heard you play once. You did? My younger sister, poor thing. She got drafted to play the viola. She started competing, and of course, the entire family got dragged out to support. I remember sitting there, just wanting to slit my wrist. I mean, the kids were good, but classical music makes me feel like I'm listening to one long Suzuki lesson on tape over and over again. And then you came out. I can't remember what it was that you were playing. But it was stunning. It was like you were hammering these tiny little nails into my heart, one by one. It was amazing. Wait, you were Hannah's brother, weren't you? Yep, still am. <laughs> She was good. Nice too, would say hi, a smile. You don't play anymore, do you? No. I always wonder, what happened? Why'd you stop? Was it because of the pressure? No, no one ever made me play. I wanted to. I loved it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to pry. Man, if Emmy were here, she'd kill me. She always says I'm way too nosy. Who's Emmy? My fiance. You're engaged. Two months. Oh. Wow. How about you? Oh, uh, it was an immaculate conception. He's long gone. I'm oh, sorry. Hi, <laughs> yeah. Why do you think you got the dinner invite? Oh. Man. No wonder you looked at me like you wanted to kill me. Nothing personal. Are you kidding me? I'm flattered that your mom thinks I'm good enough for you. I think if you're Korean with a pulse, you're good enough. No. Your mom thinks the world of you. She does? Yeah. She's always like, Eunice is so bright, so smart. She can be anything she wants if she puts her mind to it. <clears throat> that does sound like her. When did you know? I mean... How did you know she was the one? I don't know. I mean, I've been in love before where I'm just so excited that whenever that person walks into the room, it's like they are the room. But with Amy, it's kind of different. Calmer. Better. I mean, the way she explains it, you don't marry someone because you're in love. You marry someone because you make a good match. Because you make a good team. Sons. <laughs> Sounds so romantic. What's romantic? Being swept off your feet and having it burn out in your ear? Haven't your parents ever told you about Chung? <laughs> what? Uh, it's a form of love, but it's not our idea of love. It's more like care. I don't know how to describe it. In fact, Amy says I really don't understand what it is and that I can't because I'm not really Korean, you know, born there and everything. You mean you can't if you're not? Well, if you don't have the word for something, then how can you? I have to admit, when your mom offered me dinner, I was kind of hoping you'd be here. It's nice to finally meet you. Disappointing, huh? Not at all. You know, after that competition where I saw you, I went home and dug up that newspaper. I, uh, put your face up on the wall. Uh, you're kidding. Well, well, well not, 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 not a creepy stalker kind of way, okay? I, I, just, I just liked it, okay? I liked your smile. Because you know what? You had every right to smile and be proud of your medals. You were good. Really good. I've never been half as good as that at anything. I bet you're a good doctor. As a matter of fact, I am. Here, it's the last piece. Pay hey, special attention to the gentleman caller. Long waited and hoped for someone. It's never quite what we expect. And it's never something we can have. It's not my fault. You didn't even try. Don't you see it would be the perfect solution to everything? He's what you need. Someone steady and secure. Is that what this is about? I just thought that maybe if you had a husband, you wouldn't have to hide anything and the baby wouldn't be ashamed. You mean you wouldn't be. I, I only try and do what's best for you, which your father would want. My intentions, they are good. I know. That's always been the problem. 
Just say you could have been nicer. Oh, he's engaged. But it's not serious. He loves her. They've got Chung or whatever. What? Chung. I like Chung. Oh, Chung. Yeah, that. So what is it? It's impossible to explain. Wouldn't understand. It's love, right? Love. What's love? Love is nothing. <laughs> oh, is it commitment? Devotion. Destiny. Stop talking nonsense. <laughs> you don't have to love someone to have tongue with them. You don't even need to like them to have tongue with them. Put it like this, you could have tongue with someone you hate. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Well, think about it. You hate someone. It's like a shadow that falls across your life. Now take that person away. You feel this emptiness, this feeling that something in your life is missing. Where's your shadow? What's proving you are there? Something that made you who you are is gone. That's tongue. Love, but not quite love. Love, but more than love. That's not tongue. That's codependency. No. Tongue is when you give the other person whatever it is in your power to give them. Whatever they ask, because you care for them so much. Have you? No, can you feel it for someone instantly? Like, tongue at first sight. <laughs> it's not passion. Tongue takes time. Okay. Have you loved anyone the way I mean? Love like you fall in? I don't think so. Really? <laughs> Never. Not even once. So what? You have. And yes. has it helped you? Love goes. Passion goes. Tongue stays. My parents were old when they met. Old were the day and time. She was 29, he was 30. A year after they married, they came here with nothing and opened and closed every kind of business you can think of. Liquor store, dry cleaning. And then they opened a convenience store. Open from eight to 11, six days a week. They worked together in that store for five years until the day my father was shot. My mother, to this day, has never talked about what happened, even though she was the one who called the ambulance and sat with my father as he died. When I was in junior high, I saw that famous film of Kennedy's assassination in history class. And ever since then, in my head, when I think back on that day, I imagine my father is Kennedy and my mom is Jacqueline. When the bullet strikes him, he has no idea what has happened. He is more surprised and in pain. When he falls over on her, she screams over and over again. His blood stains her pink suit. His blood stains her hands. And she will never be clean again. Get up. Please, please, please just get up and say something. Please, just get up and do something. Get up. Get up, Hachi! Appa! Who's there? Wrong with you, it doesn't bite. I thought you got 
got rid of it. I tried and couldn't. I was talented, wasn't I? You were the best. Better than? Yes, you were better than. Water will be done soon. Uh, I don't want any. I'll be fine. Where's the? I put away uh, in there. Oh, you nice. Chai ta. Just go to bed. All this thinking, I tell you, too much is no good. Watch with a faded face and go to bed. Stopped at 11.22. One scarf, square, colorful. to a young poet by Rainer Maria Rilke. Signed. Daniel. <laughs> I don't understand why you're getting so upset. I'm not upset. You were so beautiful. I was okay.
she was young, my mother was the most beautiful woman our family has seen in generations. Her hair wasn't like mine. It wasn't a thin and mousy brownish, a black that hadn't quite made up its mind yet. Her hair shone the deepest, quietest black imaginable. When I was a child, she let me brush it, and I could still feel it, how it slipped through my hands and crackled with static. I used to go into the bathroom in the evenings after she already gone to sleep and see a huge pile of black hairpins on the sink. It was like she was held together by them, all of her held together by little pieces of twisted and bent steel. Somewhere in the big, somewhere between the historical TV dramas you've seen and the modern soul set in soul, you've conjured up this place somewhere in the middle of five thousand years. There is this room. Is this where you grew up? Yes. But look outside. It looks like Southern California, <laughs> where you grew up. What you imagine is always from what you know. Aren't rice paper walls medieval? Yes, but it looks so nice and you can't help it. You like things then. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. 
eight notes make a scale, and it repeats itself all the way up the keys. Back far enough, 
know if you can find it. He said, Tell me, Queen. I said, Yes. Even though everyone says, This, this is where I can tell. They notice it. They smell like Mount Ebo. Everyone says, This is infatuation. You like it. They will be built on there. I don't listen. I don't care. The new world, that's a Sunday, right? Fast as water. Oh, I can hardly wait. He fills my emptinesses. And we love each other so much. And we have talk? Maybe. Yes, we are! <laughs> I was in love. My whole life I held myself apart. I thought I was not worthy or capable already. And then it came to me. It's not a big deal. Just open it. You can't keep giving me gifts like this. <laughs> oh my God. You had that string with a blanket over it hanging in front of your window ever since I've known you. It's time you've had a real... <laughs> Window treatment. <laughs> I can't believe you even know the term window treatment. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll help you put it up. <laughs> Where have you been all my life? In Vermont, maybe? I'll cherish it forever. Or at least until my next apartment. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about that. See, my lease is up in a few months, and I know they're just gonna crank up the rents. I hate that. Yeah. But I was thinking that maybe I try to find another place. I feel like I've kind of outgrown that little studio anyways. There's no way you can afford one bedroom all by yourself. I could, if I split it with someone. You want to move in together? You know when I rehearsed this scene beforehand? I imagine those words coming out of your mouth with a more upbeat tone. I just uh, didn't see it coming. Lillian. Uh, yeah. Like I never had anyone or I came close to. Oh, wow. <laughs> so is that a yes? Joe, how well do you think you know me? You on the phone in half a word. I know you hate shellfish. I know you kick in your sleep. What else? I don't want to move in with you. That's fine. No, it was just a thought. Why would you? Don't you don't have to. Wait, wait, but do you mean now or ever? Why would you want to move in with someone like me? Someone like what? Someone who. Someone who. Doesn't know how. But what are you talking about? It's like I want to, and it's there, but I, uh, I can't. I, I can't. You can't what? Do you love me? You know I do. No. You always say that. You always say, I love being with you, or you make me so happy, but you can never just say it. Can't you just say it? not that I don't want to settle down, it's just that I can't picture myself. I mean, I don't think I'm felt for that. Well, I am. Uh... Another item on the reading list. D.H. Lawrence's story, The Rocking Horse Winner. A little boy lives in a house that whispers, money, there must be more money. In order to stop the whisperings, he takes to riding his rocking horse endlessly, hours and hours each day. 
one who to tell you a story about a girl. Her rocking horse was her cello. She touched it for the first time when she was six. And as soon as she touched it, she was good. And then one time, she became great. The life she had before she began playing was silent, unremarkable. But when she played, when she played, she was extraordinary. Nothing was beyond her reach. She wasn't afraid of anything. Ten years old and she didn't even know what fear was. After her father died, she started playing the cello as she had never played before. By the age of 15, she became a champion. And then, everything changed. Eunice, it's me. I know who you are. I brought you food. I don't want it. You're hungry. I know you are. Why won't you eat? Be poisoned. How can you even think that? Just being careful. After all, how do I know you're not working for them? They didn't shoot you, did they? They said you could do that. They don't exist. If you use the word they one more time, then a scream. Then scream! Brought you your medicine if you just took the pill. Don't be stupid. So that I almost suspect would be onto them. Onto what? None of this is real. You're just imagining. Oh, Mom. Reality is like an onion. There are so many layers, you have no idea. And then, you remember this part, don't you? And then what happened? I don't know. It was a long time ago. I don't know. It was a long time ago. I know you don't have Alzheimer's to stop acting. He spoke to her, to me. I thought God or something was speaking to me. You found God, or he found you. And he said that they were after you, the men who killed your father. They were going to kill me. And you believe him. So for six months, you were at in the wild Valley County suburbia, hiding behind the Alpha Beta, broken the law, pointing to Hills Mall like a ladder that you John the Baptist. LA's a good place to be a runaway. They're freezing to death, that's for sure. But you never strayed far from home. Why is that? I don't remember. Yes, you do. Because he told me not to. Well, what else? What else? I don't you? remember! Yes, you do. He said, go over the house. Why should I go back there? So that I can take the pain from you. That's what you want, isn't it? I don't know. All you have to do is go back there. Finish what has already. You want me to go? Think about it. She's miserable and unhappy anyways. <coughs> Hasn't she been through enough pain? Really? You'd be doing her a favor. Heaven is paradise, Eunice. Don't you want your mother to be with your father in paradise? I go to the house. Right, go on. I go from window to window, and no one seems to be home. I see her in the living room as she's listening to some old Saul's record. She looks old and tired. Oh my gosh, she's beautiful in that room. I see a hand on the windowsill. It moves the curtain. And then I realize it's my hand. Eunice? Eunice? You scare me to death. What's wrong with you? You're not dressed for the cold at all. Don't listen to me. I don't care. I'm just glad you're home. I'm not here to stay. I just needed something. The temperature's getting lower. You should just stay here at least for the night. You're not listening to me. I'm not staying. Then what? Are you hungry? Do you need money? Shh! What? No, not the money! What are you listening to? This is silly, I know. But it helps me not to miss you so much. The house gets so quiet, you can't imagine. Without you,
Aren't you playing? It's been so long. But I keep the cello right where you left it. Now it just collects dust. It'll go away. You sound awful. You sound beautiful. Bach will turn over in his grave. Someday, you will be better than Bach. It would be ridiculous. Better than Casals. Better than Yo-Yo Ma. Maybe. You can be anything you want. If you don't get what you want, it just means you didn't want it bad enough. Then again. Genetics, yes, but most of it's environment. It's not smoking, it's exercising. It's the choices you make. Right. Look, you're just getting nervous. It's natural. You're going to be fine. The baby's going to be just fine. It's just there are so many factors. Oh, listen to the worrier. You sound just like your mom. <laughs> I'll oh, just enjoy it, will you? Go, go buy stuff. I don't know. Baby stuff. Walkie talkies. Teething toys. Oh, whatever. I'm not. I'm not keeping it. What? I'm putting it up for adoption. That's why I came home. But your mom. My mom what? Did she tell you I was keeping it? No, she didn't say anything. She just seemed so happy. She did? Well, yeah. Anyway, it's funny. Well, what? That you, I mean, Emmy and I, we can't have. And we want them. And here's you. Anyway. You can't? Well, she can. No. I'm sorry. What are you going to do? You love who you love, right? So, I, uh, 
I gotta get back to the struggling masses. <laughs> Take two pills and call me in the morning. Okay? Thank you. For what? Tell your mom I said hi. Hey, Paul. Um, yeah. Just out of curiosity, what could leave a scar like a star shaped one here? It sounds like a trach. A what? A tracheotomy? Your airway gets blocked, so they have to put a hole in you. You're talking about your mom's car? Yeah, that's ancient. What do you mean? Probably a childhood battle with pneumonia or something. I wouldn't worry about it. Remember, normal people? Phone, <laughs> coffee, much easier. Sometimes I think you don't know how to be happy. 
You never choose it. It's right there, but you don't choose it. Instead, you choose the difficult thing, the hard thing, like the past. The past is hard. Then let me choose. Don't decide for me. That woman. Are you hungry? I made food, not bought. Your favorites. Eunice, what's wrong with you? Open the door. You have to eat. You don't have to talk, but you have to eat. It's been three days and you haven't eaten a thing. Eunice. Eunice. You're scaring me. Asked if I need a counselor. She 
she didn't find it funny when I said, fuck the counselor, I need a drink. For two days, for two days I fell. I was terrified. But there was this kind of amazement. I had felt so empty for so long and suddenly I was a vessel. And I knew what it must have been like to be not Columbus, but one of his, one of his ships carrying all that hope and carrying all that expectation to the new world. But I know, Columbus, that there's no new world. I want you to know, it's not that I didn't want you. But long after you leave my arms, everything in you will lead back towards me. My dust on your heels, my in you, rotting you from the inside out, and I won't, I won't do that to you because I did, I do love you. I mean, in my own way, I do. It's just that there's no one in my heart not with me. There you are. I was looking for you. So you found me. What's all this? The tree out back is bursting with them. <laughs> They're dropping on the ground and rocks. But what are you going to do with all of them? I don't know. Make lemonade, I guess. Your father planted that tree. I don't know why. He didn't like lemons. <laughs> he meant to plant something else, a different fruit. They sold him the wrong tree and he didn't know it until the fruit came out. Poor dad. Always getting shafted by life. Don't say that. Why not? It's true. I guess you never know what you plan until it comes up. Ooh. You just. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bitter fruit. Oh. Here, drink some water. Crazy girl. Don't call me that. After I saw your door was open, I started looking for you everywhere. And then I looked for you in the garage. The car was parked. Did you go somewhere? Mm hmm. Where? To the doctor at my checkup. Why didn't you say so? I could have driven you. What did they say? Baby's healthy? Yeah. Then why do you look like that? Well, I don't have babies. Eunice, what is it? I changed my mind. I'm not doing adoption. What? I checked and I'm still within the save time. What do you mean? Well, after the first trimester, the procedure, procedure isn't as bad. It's really for the best. You best can't. Way. I won't let you. Adoption is one thing, but... Emma, do you know the statistics? Do you have any idea? I knew when I still wanted you. Okay, who's gonna want a baby like this? Keep the child. Keep it like I kept you. Why couldn't you have been brave and just gotten rid of me? There was always the chance you wouldn't have it, just like I didn't. But I did. I did. I wasn't afraid, not of having you, not of raising you. I was sick. I could have hurt you. But you got help. If that's what you want to call it. They carted my body away and pumped me full of drugs and stupid body of mine just kept going. But you got better. Now you're fine. Oh, look at me, mother. Look at my thigh. But it's in you. It's all in you. Uh, that girl's gone. <laughs> Do you know why she was so good? Do you remember the year I started becoming a champion? Yes, you were 12. It was the year after Dad died. That year, you won every contest you entered, every tournament, every competition. I did nothing but play, eight hours a day. You went from being a good player to a great one. Juilliard wanted you, everyone wanted you. When I played, I thought of nothing, cared about nothing. I saw nothing, I heard nothing. I was going to make a sacrifice worth it. What do you mean? He didn't die for me. But it was worse. He lived for 
me, and only me. <laughs> no. When I played, it was the only time we ever talked. There are so many different kinds of languages that exist between a father and daughter, and we didn't know any of them. I used to uh, watch them in the evenings, writing out the checks for my music, my bows, my lessons. I was horrified to find the large amounts. Those dollars represented his hours, his minutes, his whole life trickling down to units of cash that brought me teachers, instruments, accessories. It felt like blood money, Mom. <laughs> what kind of world? What kind of world do you mean? I was there at the store. What are you talking about? You were at school. I was there. Yes. I remember. It's a half day. It's a sunny half day, and I climb home so fast I don't stop at the ice cream truck. I was in the back, didn't even hear you come in. I was going to spring around and surprise him because I made it to state to the highest honor for someone in my age bracket, and he'll be happy. He'll smile. He hasn't smiled so long. No. He's helping a customer. No, two men. No, they seem young. Bodies like boys. They bark, they break, and my father is. I don't make a sound, and my father. Nothing has sound, and the men run out. tell you, it seems kind of funny to think now, did I ever tell you, tell you why I wanted you to play the cello? What? I chose it for you. No, I chose it. I remember the room you took me to, how there were all of those instruments, and you let me go one by one and choose the one I wanted. That's, it felt right. That's why I chose it. It was just a kind of whim. I heard it for the first time when I was just a child. I never heard, seen, or heard anything like it before. It was from another world. A better world, the one more than anything that I wanted to see. I did. For better or worse. I did. <laughs>
like gum, don't you? <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, you gotta take off the wrapper first. I've seen you before hanging around. Sajin, right? Boy, you sure look just like her. No, who I am. Daniel. That's right, and I'm your sister's <coughs> friend. Well, do you know where they've taken her? Didn't think so. Go on, you could touch it, it doesn't bite. Uh, here, this is the bow. Now you hold it just like flat across the string, and then you draw it across. There, see, not so hard. <laughs> okay, a little, a little hard. <laughs> right. You play for your sister all the time, talk about music appreciation. I sit out here and play to her window. God, your parents hated me for that. Here, have it all. I don't need it. I'm leaving tomorrow to go back to the land of gum. But, will you do something for me before I go? Stand in her room and let me play to you. It'll be like it used to be. Like I'm playing for her. Yes, kind. 
maybe the strongest kind. When you're with someone, first, there is love. And time passes, there can be hate. But after that, what's left is tsung. You can't have tsung with someone you just met. There's memory in tsung, there's time. Is there history? <laughs> memory plus time. <laughs> Lights back up now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Rock. That's even a little rock. I don't know. 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 I don't know